Today I'm going to show you how I did this. Let's go. So this effect is quite easy to pull off and it uses the Roto Brush tool in After Effects. Roto brushing is basically a form of masking and it's quite fun because you can then just have lots of little things which enables you to layer things on top of each other and you can have multiple of the same object in one shot. Good evening. I'm also Paddy, I'm also that guy, but I've just put a different jumper on and it's an entirely different day, probably a different week or month. All right, folks, let's get under it now. So what I've got open here is the DaVinci Resolve project. I've done this using both DaVinci and After Effects. I'm pretty sure you can do everything in DaVinci, but I just don't like rotoscoping in DaVinci. I've always done it in After Effects, okay? So that's why we're gonna do it in two softwares. All right, now. This is the original project file. I'm gonna hide all of these and reveal our first clip, which is known as the clean plate. So go out and shoot yourself a clean plate, which is going to look a bit like this. Here's me slow-mo turning around facing the camera. So once you've shot the clean plate, walk back towards your camera looking like a silly boy. Once you've shot your clean plate, you're going to want to do your jumps. A key thing to know here is shoot this at as high a frame rate as you possibly can, but shoot it at quite a high shutter speed as well. Now, people are going to be going, but Paddy, the 180 degree rule. <laughs> your 180 degree rule. There is a thing called the 180 degree rule, which basically just like makes motion blur and stuff. I don't know, go and look it up. But then ignore it for this. Because as Andreas Hem will tell you, when you know that you're going to do like rotoscoping or cutting someone out of a frame, usually you would shoot like with a 180 shutter. That's actually uh, not good when you're doing a lot of VFX. That's right, Andreas. You don't want a lot of motion blur when it comes to rotoscoping and generally in VFX. So, shoot quite a high frame rate. I've only shot this at 50 frames a second, so that's how slow it is. Bang. Right, cut to your clip to kind of there. So we got this. So we got going up and stop it there. So you want that clip to be pretty, pretty short. This is where the magic starts happening and this is why I use DaVinci Resolve for this bit. Command and R, you're gonna wanna retime this, stretch it way out to like 5%. You want this clip to be well slow. Now, when you play that, it's gonna look terrible. So, we're gonna try and make it look not terrible. Come over to UR. Retime and scaling. Under retime process, change that to optical flow. Under motion estimation, change this to warp speed better. If you try and play this, your computer is likely to freak out. So, come onto the clip, right click, click render in place. What this is gonna do is render out the clip, then put it back in to the timeline where it already is. Hit render, save it somewhere in the project file. I, I normally have a renders in place because I do this quite a lot in a lot of projects. So renders in place, bang, bosh, stick it in there. Okay, we're done. What you're gonna have now is something that looks like this. Woo. Well slow and smooth. I tend to shoot a few different jumps. So here's a little spin and then I'll move over and do another jump. Another little spin, just so you're getting enough depth and perspective shifts in your little humans. Cool, so once you've done all that, LA bosh, bosh, bosh. Bosh! Now it's time to jump into After Effects. Let's do it. We now find ourselves in After Effects. And what we're going to want to do now is chop ourselves out. Bosh! Start yourself a new composition. I've already done that because I've already done this whole thing because you watched it before this happened. If you haven't opened After Effects ever before in your life, just open it and strap in. Did he say strap in or strap on? Drop your footage in. Double click on your a clip you want to chop out. Come up here to this little brush with a little dude by it. That's the rotor brush tool. Now you can click command and click and drag to the left and right, uh, which is gonna increase or decrease your brush size. You wanna kinda have it, like if you're gonna zoom in, make it a bit smaller, you know, just make it kinda like, I don't know, that size, proportionally. Anyway, draw kinda roughly 
on your little human. Uh, go down the legs, go up the legs, go down the hands. Now, this isn't great, you see, because I've got, like, a little bit of... Um, everything's a bit beige and it's a bit grey and everything's pretty similar. So, really, if you want rotoscopy to work well, you need to wear brightly coloured clothes and stand out from the background. Now, the keen-eyed amongst you would go, but Patrick, um, it doesn't appear to be a proper outline. You'd be very correct in saying that. Click Option or Alt for all of you PC users, and you're going to get this little no-entry sign. Now, no-entry does not mean it cannot be done. On the contrary, it means it absolutely can be done, but it's just going to be the opposite of what we have been doing. Instead of stuff that you want to keep, this is going to get rid of stuff you don't want. So, these little gaps in the arms. Now, look at that. We've lost our jacket. Click on it again without holding. Oh, good lord above. Save me. Cool. Yeah, just click green. Uh, green means go and put stuff in. Red, option, alt, means uh, take this away, please, with haste. Um, so yeah, if you if it kind of starts messing up, just paint it back in. Now, once you've done this, you're going to take your finger, any of them will do, maybe your thumb, and you're going to hit spacebar. Bang. This is going to track through the footage and the roto brush and all its unbelievable glory, glory is going to just stick to your person. Now, if it doesn't stick to your person, which this has done pretty perfectly, all you have to do is pause it on the frame that it hasn't liked and go back in, tidy it up, and then click spacebar again, and it will repropagate, big word, repropagate all of your frames with the correction that you made. What I also like to do, take the feather up to like eight to 10, I'm going to go for 8 on this occasion. Shift Edge. I want to minus that just a little bit, which this basically sucks in or pushes out the actual line of the rotoscope. And then Reduce Chatter. I always put it to 100%. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but Chatter is the sort of wiggly bits on the roto where it's really trying to fine-tune it. But if you crank Chatter up, that just it just smooths everything out. In theory, I think I'm... Don't listen to me. Why are you watching this listening to me? There's plenty of far better people on YouTube that you could be watching to figure out how to do this. But thank you for choosing moi. Now, the last thing you want to do is click freeze. And freezing it basically just means you, you can't f*** it up. It's done. That's it. You can unfreeze it and go back in and change things. But once it's frozen, it's just handy and you're good to go. Bah! Oh, right. Now you're gonna come up here to the composition. We're gonna click out of our little layer and we're gonna click back to the composition and good holy f We appear to be floating. Fantastic. Replicate this across your other little floaty boys. I've got other floaty boys, I think. Yeah, there's some other floaty boys. Cool. Put all your floaty boys together and we're gonna go file, export, add to render queue. Now, important. Click on a high quality, which is the, f the formatting options, because you need quite a specific format to get this out of here with a transparent layer behind your little friend. Click on format options. Apple ProRes, this needs to be Apple ProRes 4444. Now hit that. Click OK. Channels, this needs to be RGB plus alpha. An alpha layer is the transparent layer, basically. Click OK. Fire this out into somewhere that's useful. Um, I've already done all this, so I'm not actually going to do it. But you basically hit save and render. Ah! Cool. Cool. Schmafter Schmex. And come back in to Damn here at all. Now, once you're back into Damn here at all, we are going to drop in our little men. And look, there's a little man. There's another little man. Now, if we come back to our original clean place and we put one of our little men on, bang! Look at that. You literally just have to drag it and drop it above your footage. And then bang! We put another little one in there. Now all you then have to do is basically just go through and put your little men in 
make them a little bit bigger, make them a little bit smaller, scatter them around. And then what I've done here is I've hit a keyframe at the start. I've then hit done a keyframe at the end and I've just moved everybody up a little bit. Basically, there you have it. So once you've done this, you can then go in and start mucking around with other things. In this next clip, I've, done, I've literally taken the exact same set of little dudes and brought them across here, but just slapped a big old Gaussian blur on them because they're way farther behind me. Look at that frown. Ooh, that's like, that's like, you know, that's how you, that's how you do it, apparently. You gotta look serious. Social media likes people who look serious, even though I'm not very serious. serious. Here's another little example. This is, a, you guessed it, a clean plate. with me jumping and then me reaching up to grab grab me some and then at the end I've just put a spaceship in which was do you need me to tell you how to do that probably do get a spaceship off Google images very illegally stick it in the background and then it'll look like that just joking go watch film riot if you want to actually learn how to do all this properly and stop watching this video and don't watch any more of my videos. There probably won't be any anyway. Okay, thanks very much. I'll see you in another one, maybe. Probably won't. This is probably it. Ah!